Welcome back to the VR Workshop. We may have the engine in, but there's a lot to do before we can make noise. <sighs> Where do you start? It is a bit daunting, but I'm not going to be too fussy because it is a temporary fix because this engine is coming back out again. So I guess we'll start with the wiring. We'll start running that up to sensors, or the sensors that are in the bike at least. And then from there, we need to get this fuel regulator. In fact, let's do the fuel regulator first, because that's just in the way. Um, so this fuel regulator is a boost referenced. So there's a pipe on here that goes up to the, the manifold pressure. So as boost is introduced into the plenum, uh, the pressure rises and the rising rate is measured here as well. So it actually uh, creates more flow. So it's standard, it's sitting at, I think we've got it running at 48 PSI around that. Uh, but when this thing's running full boost, you've got almost, no, just over 60 PSI of fuel pressure as well. The gauge is on there because there's a space for a gauge, so why not use it? Um, it does just bolt a couple of head bolts here. This is the return, because the regulator is on the return line. Of course, all the wiring's in the way. So we get this bolted up and out of the way, so we're not tripping over it. And then we can deal with everything else. I do, however, need some new mounts because the old ones are here and they're just nasty. I just don't have the, the I can't put them on, they're just too bad. We'll just put new ones on, we have new ones. That's better. These little top hats are actually designed for uh, Ducati grommets that can hold radiators and exhaust and they're quite common on Ducatis. Uh, not this Ducati part of this was made in the UK. But this is just a little top hat to stand off the uh, the mount. Which is nice and powder coated now because I didn't have time before and it got really nasty with salt. Urgh. Of course. First job done. Now that we've got the regular out of the way, we can attack the wiring. The wiring in this bike is fairly simple. It was designed loosely based on the supercharged bike that we'd built previously, uh, with minimal sensors. It didn't try and complicate things, because uh, the more stuff you have, the more stuff's gonna go wrong. So it is a very basic, uh, bike in the way of sensors. Water temperatures down here. We have the horizontal coil plug here. Um, we have under here, which will connect to that, that's your crank sensor. We've got that there. Um, this is our, luckily they're labeled. Air temperature, uh, oil pressure, that is your neutral switch. That's your TPS, throttle position. That is the air pressure. And that is your two injector leads back and forth. Fairly basic. Which then runs back to a Microtech ECU and then the AIM MX dash. Not too difficult. So let's try and run these in place. These fuel lines, now that they've got this new sheath in them, they're quite stiff to move around which makes life a bit more difficult, but it's fine. We'll start plugging stuff in. And I know this water temperature one is gonna come back out again as soon as we have <clears throat> um, Jubilee clips for the hoses. That's fine, it's one plug. And again, I'm not too concerned about the routing of these because this motor is gonna be coming back out. So it's just keeping it to the bare minimum. 
Next on the agenda, coolant hoses. Now, one modification we did for last year was power to coat all the aluminium coolant hoses. These were made specifically for the bike. Uh, they're just thin aluminium tubes, a little flaring tool, so you can make them any size you want. And even the flaring tool is really cheap. But what we did find, like everything else, with this bare aluminium, if it's bare aluminium, salt starts eating it. So they were thrown in the powder coating pile at the same time. Now, we fit these first, that way we can build everything else around the coolant hoses. Trying to get the coolant hoses in when you've got fuel lines in and all your wiring in place is going to get a bit challenging. So let's get these on first. Now, <clears throat> we're finding that the hose clips or Jubilee clips for these are pretty much a conceivable item, even though these are stainless steel, the 304 stainless steel, they're not 316, so they are going to rust again, but they're not going to rust the same way mild steel will. <clears throat> um, point of note for building any bike, um, keep your Jubilee clips all the same. So these are 7mm heads, so they're all going to be 7mm heads. So when we change the engine again, I know I just need a 7mm socket to take them off. They're not a mix match of 7s, 8s and 10s, and that's just a good practice. But anyway, let's get these fitted. Okay, so these are just going to get held on temporarily because uh, the engine will be coming out again. The final mock, well, final fitment of all this will be that hose will be supported there like it was last time. These zip ties will be black instead of white because the black ones are stronger and they look better. But yeah, it's just a. Uh, a dyno test this is all getting so and that is all the hoses on done over well, down here we'll be as well fit the starter line on and do a bit of electrics put the rectifier and plug that back in just so we've got less stuff lying around. So we'll get that done. Next job in the agenda, get the oil lens fitted. And while we're on this side of the bike, we can fit the earth through the engine. Pressure sensor that is plugged in, and the neutral switch, which is a bit of a tight squeeze. Now, I think that's everything that we can possibly put on there until we start adding more components. But let's just double check. So, we've got that's our injectors. That's going to be uh, process elimination. 
there's just going to be a throttle position sensor in there which goes this side that is our air temperature pressure pressure which means that's going to be our air temperature yep should be two coil plugs somewhere oh, there's one and um, that's one oh there we go hiding by these fuel lines that is the other one so we need to bolt some stuff on here to progress throttle bodies it is now we're getting to the fun parts we've got sort out the throttle bodies in the plenum and the injectors and everything else that goes in this part and once that's on the next section is fitting the turbo and the exhaust and then we're ready to go put some fuel in it maybe a swing arm maybe a shock absorber but in essence we're good to go this set of throttle bodies and this whole thing is obviously modified or set up so it can take the pressure of a turbo in a normal set of throttle bodies these are ducati 999 throttle bodies they're slightly different to the 998s <coughs> in essence they work all the same <coughs> you've got your um, seals which go either side of the butterfly they're actually like a fiber soft seal um, which can take the take the hit with petrol etc um, and you also have bleed screws on each uh, body so and that when you've got a standard bike they'll be unscrewed like one and a half times out and it allows fresh air to be sucked in and it allow it it manages the, the idle speed and the, the, the idling of the bike and you balance both throttles accordingly if we're going to force air into these with the normal seals at the end of the butterflies you'll just have air escaping there and if the bleed screws are balanced out like you would normally have the air will escape there too so we've got the bleed screws turned all the way in we've got a set of o-rings at either side of the butterfly shaft uh, to make sure we've got a decent seal and then we've obviously got a modified um, throttle cable holder for that as well now with the o-rings it does mean that you have a, a slow return um, to the throttle it doesn't snap shut like a normal bike would because uh, it's, it's quite sticky and it does get better the more you use it but it's just the o-rings energized in the shaft for our purpose it doesn't really matter if the throttle's slow to close um, if it was on a road it'd be a serious problem but we'll give and take you you'll take that but in, in the return we have a complete pressurized system so these are your throttle bodies actually that's a modification as well because that uh, bolts the plenum down now the plenum has got an o-ring seat here and here and we run an additional lowering on the base of it so when we sit it in like that we do have a perfectly good seal and the injectors sit on top for a shower effect with the common rail fuel line over the top of it and from there we've got AR um, dump valve vent valve for the plenum and that sits this connection here sits underneath the butterflies which is the one that we discussed in an earlier video which got broken off from the, the broken parts still in there so when the butterflies close you get a vacuum which pulls this diaphragm out and all the pressurized gas or pressurized air uh, which comes from the turbo and intercooler vents out the, the blow off valve and that way you're not back pressuring your turbo it keeps the turbo spinning for what we're doing here it's probably not all that important because all we're doing is in one direction uh, but when you're on the road or a track etc it's important that when you shut the throttle off you're not pushing all the air back and pressuring at the turbo and slowing it all down because then you get turbo lag when you get back on the throttle again so we need to start building all this up we'll get it on we've got some ooh, our pressure temperature goes in here and we've got some ports for the pressure air pressure coming out for the manifold pressure um, we've got another feed for our fuel regulator that comes off here as well the rising rate fuel regulator and we're going to blank 
we're going to have to put all this together, make sure it's all sealed, we're happy with it, and we'll put it on the bike. And that, my friends, is the throttle bodies and plenum chamber ready to be bolted to the bike. Well, I say almost. We do need to fit a clamp to this hose here, but I'm not going to do that until it's in place, just in case I need to move this. I do need to cut this hose back and get this little clamp out, but that's a two second job. And once we get it on, we will be fitting a little turnbuckle here to each side with a strap probably to the frame, I haven't figured this one out yet, and that will hold the throttle bodies onto the rubbers and the cylinder head, so it will stop it popping off like it did in run five or six, I can't remember which. We ended up using a ratchet strap, but it was a bit ugly, so we'll, we'll have a bit more finesse with this one. But yeah, we're ready to go. So we're gonna call the video here. Um, it's a long enough again. They really creep up when you put details in there. Um, I promise we will make noise in the next video. No, we won't. No, because the next video, we're in Australia. We're going racing in Australia. We're going to the Fink Rally. We leave in two days. It's a two-day event from Queensland to Fink and then Fink back to Queensland. Um, very fast, very gnarly, bumpy off-road rally. Should be a lot of fun. Should be great fun. So we're going to have two weeks of that. So the next video you're going to see is us in Australia having some fun with off-road bikes. Then I promise we'll come back and we'll get this thing running. And we need to get out in the dyno. Thanks again for all your uh, comments and your likes in the videos. If there's something in particular that you want to see that we're not doing, let us know. <laughs> if there's something in particular that we're doing wrong, let us know. Um, but yeah, thanks again for your time and we'll see you in Australia.